Hey folks, I'm Grimwit. This is Fine Sweeper. So let me tell you a story I found. Robert Donner and Kurt Johnson were both hired by Microsoft in 1989. Kurt had written a program for OS2 where the object was to find a path across a minefield from one corner to the other. Robert wanted to write a game for Windows as a programming exercise, and Kurt let him have the source code to use as a starting point. He wrote the main application over a weekend and kept the original number and mine graphics. Kurt was involved with, quote, the initial random ideas we had for the game, end quote. The new game was simply called Mine. After watching a friend test the program, Donner changed the goal of the game to opening all safe squares. The original version had hidden coins that allowed you to survive stepping on a mine. Sound familiar? Instead of a time counter, there was a coin counter. A later release replaced the mouse cursor with a foot, which turned into a bloody stump when a mine was hit. According to Donner, I did the graphics for this, so it didn't look very good. Donner added the famous Zizzy cheat, quote, so another friend of mine could impress people with his psychic abilities, end quote. There's a long pause here because I simply can't find a logical way into this mess. All options are 50-50 chance. I have plenty of lives to spare, but I always hope that I won't need them. This cheat was a magic word in Colossal Cave Adventure, one of the first games he had played on a computer. Cording was added after watching a much faster friend clicking through the game. Cording, incidentally, is what I'm doing when I'm clicking on a number, and if all the mines are accounted for, it clears out all clear tiles. And sometimes it sets off a mine, because I've flagged the mines wrong. Well. This mole hole is a good example of what you want to happen. Both these ones here are accounted for because of both of these ones. All neighboring tiles, other than these two tiles, therefore are clear. In keeping in the foot cursor, the original help file called Cording a big step. As the game involved mines and was written for Windows, he named the executable file winmine.exe in compliance with the 8.3 FAT file system used at the time. He added the smiley face and, quote, The idea for the sunglasses was grabbed from one of the card decks in Solitaire, end quote. Sometime after the release of Windows 3.0 on May 22, 1990, Microsoft decided to release a collection of games for the new platform. Employees were asked to submit games, and Donner submitted WinMine and Tick Tactics. Both were accepted and released as part of the Windows Entertainment Pack on October 8, 1990, retailing in the U.S. for $39.95. According to Donner, quote, The Minesweeper title was selected after Microsoft Legal did a name search and gave us a few options. The foot cursor was removed and the game was cleaned up by someone in the graphics department. Donner notes that, quote, Microsoft never really acquired a copyright for Minesweeper. I worked for the company, wrote the game myself, on my own time, on their equipment, and distributed it for free to friends within the company. Eventually, the product manager decided to put together an entertainment package and released it with several other games. For the first WEP release, most of the games were already complete. For WEP2, they put out more official calls for submissions. One of these versions passed along among friends was Mine 2.9, written by July 9th, 1990. It featured bombs instead of mines and a 24x24 24 24 expert grid. The credits thank Kurt J, Larry H, and Rob D, and amusingly claims the copyright by Duff Software. Webster defines Duff as of poor quality. The WEP edition of the game listed the version as Minesweeper 3.0 to coincide with the current version of Windows. Robert Donner and Kurt Johnston are listed as the authors with copyright belonging to Microsoft. The game became famous when Microsoft included it alongside Solitaire with the release of their 3.1 platform on April 6, 1992.
Ouch. Unfortunately, that's all I really found. I have yet to see uh, who owns the copyright now, because that story is a little bit old. We're starting to get to the point of the game where I really have no more information. It's just sort of clearing up why a technique works rather than what a technique is. At this point in the game, theoretically, from the information I've given you, you should be able to win your first expert game. Future Mike here with the fan on. Leave a comment or leave a note in the Something Awful thread if you've won your first expert game because of these videos. That would make my day. Now it's just a matter of sitting back, counting the mines, and watching the winds roll in. Unfortunately, I've just now got to level 30. This is the point where the game becomes... Mm, not difficult for me, but certainly more challenging than normal. Levels 1 through 29 are like a warm-up, but this is where I start making more and more mistakes and start losing lives. As far as I've seen, there's no way to beat Fine Sweeper. It just continues on until you finally reach a point where there's nothing you can do. Right now, my current record is level 60, but that's just my personal best. I'm sure there are others that have made it further than me. If I could offer one piece of advice about making a Let's Play, never watch yourself replay a level, especially if it's a puzzle game, because, man, this thing is frustrating. I'm missing so many easy minds. Have we covered a four tower yet? It's really just a three tower with an extra mine attached. We have a four in the corner of five tiles and a one right next to it. Only four of these five tiles can be mines, so let's play what if. What if any of these three tiles below were clear? Well, this one would have to be a two minimum. So these three tiles must be mines. And this one accounts for these two tiles, so this third tile is clear. Thus, a three tower is complete. When I'm clearing out a mole hole, if I'm very lucky, it gives me a huge expanse like this one right here. You know what? I wish there was a Zizzy cheat. On Minesweeper, that is. The two versions of Minesweeper that I play, Minesweeper and the web version that I link to in my original post on Something Awful, neither of them have the Zizzy cheat, and that makes me sad. It makes sense though, at least for the web version that I link to. I'll link to it in the description of this video. I believe it's used mostly for competitions, and the leaderboards are unreal. Like, it's got to be more than skill. There's got to be a lot of luck involved and just days and days of doing nothing but playing Minesweeper. Here's something I didn't do because I discovered this pattern after I recorded. See this too? We're going to call this too Betty. Betty is right next to a mine and five unknown tiles. Because of this three, we know that this or this tile must be a mine. Well, those tiles account for the second mine for Betty, so all the other tiles neighboring Betty must be clear. And while we're at it, this too has both its mines accounted for as well. Not sure why I didn't click on this too. Oh well. Lost chances and everything. I like those big clicks. Cording. Cording is my favorite. On many versions of Minesweeper, I've noticed the 
uh, well, on Fine Sweeper, you just right click to clear out all the uh, all the clear spaces. But on most versions of Minesweeper, the actual way that you do it is you hold down the right click and then you left click on a number. If there's enough mines flagged next to the number, it'll clear out all neighboring spaces, which usually ends with an explosion of some kind. I think that about wraps it up for this episode of Fine Sweeper. I'd like to thank you for uh, watching. I hope you learned something today, and you know what? There. Go play some Minesweeper.